Welcome back to another YouTube video. It's your tutor, Disha. And today I'll be working question four of the CSEC July 2021, paper two. And the question reads, figure four is a labeled diagram of a nephron. Use figure four to describe how urine is formed. Let us look at figure four, the diagram of a nephron. We're seeing several parts here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use these parts to explain their roles or contributions in the formation of urine. Let's start here, the first part. As we can see, there is a network of capillaries here called the glomerulus sitting in a capsule call the Bauman's capsule. Blood coming from the renal artery is on the high pressure. The renal artery is going to be reduced to this network of capillaries in such a way that that pressure is going to force out the metabolic waste and other solutes into the Bauman's capsule membrane here to be passed along the various parts of the nephron and processed. Once filtration is achieved here at the glomerulus, the filtrate is passed into the Bauman's capsule to the first site of reabsorption. And this is a convoluted tubule here, as you can see, called the proximal convoluted tubule. And the proximal convoluted tubule reabsorbs ions like sodium, chloride, and potassium, small molecules of amino acids and glucose. Moving away from the proximal convoluted tubule, we're going down a loop, right? This loop is called the loop of Henle. Going down, it's called the descending limb of the loop of Henle. And going up, it's called the ascending limb of the loop of Henle. The descending limb it contains proteins called aquaporins. And these aquaporins are strictly involved in the reabsorption of water. What am I saying? I'm saying that most of the reabsorption of water, right, it happens at the descending limb of the loop of Henle. Descending limb is dedicated to the reabsorption of ions right like sodium chloride and so on moving away from the ascending limb the filtrate now goes to the distal convoluted tubule and an easy way for you to remember this for the exam if they give you a nephron to label just remember that the convoluted tubule that is nearest to the Bauman's capsule is called the proximal and the one that is furthest is called the distal and the distal convoluted tube now, depending on the body's internal environment, can selectively secrete or absorb different ions in an effort to maintain the blood pH and electrolyte balance. The filtrate moves away from the distal convoluted tube to the stalk-like structure called the collecting duct. And this is where students often get it wrong. They think that the collecting duct is strictly involved in just collecting what is now called urine. No, the collecting duct is also still involved in reabsorption. Yes, especially during the process of asthma regulation. Now, once the filtrate passes the collecting duct, it's going to go through the calyx and then through the pelvis and then to the bladder where it's called urine. It's no longer called filtrate, it's called urine. And that is how you form urine. And with all of that that I've just said, you can summarize it in three major steps for the six marks. So two marks you would spend on talking about ultrafiltration at the glomerulus and the Bauman's capsule, right? Then you could talk about reabsorption for another two marks which occurs at the convoluted tubules and the loop of Henle right and then lastly for two marks you could talk about secretion of the filtrate moving on to the next part 
It says, explain why there is a high concentration of glucose in the urine of a diabetic patient for four marks. This is so because either the pancreas, which is that organ responsible for creating that hormone to lower the blood glucose level, either it's defective or insulin production is limited which we which as i said before we want it to lower the high glucose concentration once that high amount of blood glucose is in the blood it's going to be passed through the kidney right and the kidney might not be able to retrieve enough of that blood glucose right before it passes out of the body as urine moving on part two state one similarity and two differences between the method by which the human body regulates blood sugar levels and the method by which the human body regulates the amount of water in the blood students this question now is testing your knowledge of homeostasis and of course a type of homeostasis called Osmo regulation, right? So one similarity between the method by which the human body regulates blood sugar levels and the amount of water is that both methods employ what we call negative feedback, right? And as biology students, you should know that negative feedback is a type of regulation system in our bodies in which the end product of a process in turn reduces the stimulus of that same process. All right, differences now. For differences, don't watch what I write here, guys. I was just brainstorming. So for differences now, you could talk about how... Um, you could talk about the differences in the hormones used. For example, um, in the method by which the body regulates blood sugar levels, there's the utilization of insulin and glucagon versus the method by which the body regulates the amount of water in the blood. There's the utilization of the antidiuretic hormone, aka ADH. Right. Apart from the hormones, you could comment on the differences in the organs in which the method is affected. And lastly, we need to suggest two ways in which kidney damage can be prevented in a diabetic and hypertensive patients. That patient can reduce the amount of sugar that they intake on a daily basis so that they can keep their blood glucose level at an optimum range, right? In such a way that the, 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 um, the kidney is not overworked in reabsorbing the glucose. For the hypertensive patient, reduce the amount of sodium intake so that those parts of the nephron that we just spoke about are not overworked in reabsorbing the ions. So that's the end of question four. I'll be joining you again in another video for question five. Question six is a, a bit long, so I might do it in another video. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the webinars.